Hey, hey, it's Hank here from Henry Paul Photography. I've just had a conversation with Robin Patterson, uh, the wedding pixie. She is a Sydney wedding celebrant. She's award-winning. She's, um, she's married almost 2,000 couples here in Sydney as well as around Australia. And uh, we just got on the phone or got over Zoom and we just had a quick chat about ways that you can make your wedding ceremony more ethical more inclusive and more generous. So uh, I'm just going to kind of jump straight into that conversation and I hope you enjoy. Hello. Hello. I can't see. Oh, there you are. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm oh, great. I'm great. It's, um, it's an interesting time. It is an interesting time. The last time we saw each other was right at the start of the lockdown. Hey. Right on the cusp. That couple that we were working with, were wondering whether or not they'd be able to get their plane in three days or if it would yeah. be ground. It was the last, it was the last wedding I did before, before everything went mental. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, so what have you been doing to keep yourself busy lately? Well, I've enjoyed having the odd weekend. That's been Yeah, nice. definitely. I've been I've been a celebrant for eleven and a half years, and I could count on my fingers the amount of weekends, actual weekends that I've experienced as a human, as opposed to racing around after other people. It was it's been nice, and then I've had a lot of very small weddings, um, which I've really enjoyed. I love the little ones. Sometimes I like them the most. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Me too. Longer. There are people actually taking advantage of this period of time to escape family dramas and expectations and massive wedding costs. And yeah, I like think it's this. given people permission to do that micro wedding or that elopement that they secretly wanted to do in the first place. Hey, I believe that's it. Yeah, well, certainly I've seen a lot of that. People go, we've got to do it now. We've got to do it as quick mm. as we can because once the restrictions are lifted, all those expectations upon them will return. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, okay, so I figure I should do a little like quick introduction. So hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Hank, and I am a wedding photographer here based in Sydney. Uh, and today I have with me Robin Patterson, who is a wedding celebrant who she's just said she's been doing this for 11 years. Now, Robin, I think when we spoke last time, you said you've done like several thousand weddings. Is that right? Not several thousand, about oh, about nineteen hundred or something. So you know, nineteen hundred. Yeah, it's a very small number, nineteen hundred. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're but enough to feel like I've got a, a feel for what people want and how people respond to things and stuff. and what works. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. So I, uh, I actually asked Robin to join me today because I wanted to just have a quick chat about something that I'm really passionate about, which is creating ethical weddings. And for me, ethical is a word that is really subjective and can be interpreted in a stack of different ways. But ultimately for me, where it kind of lines up with my values, with um, my own ethics is how do we have weddings that are inclusive, that are sustainable and that are generous. So I kind of just sent Robin a bit of an email asking her if she had some tips on as a celebrant, if she had some tips on how we could make our wedding ceremonies more ethical, more uh, inclusive, more sustainable and more generous. So I might hand it over to you, Robin. Uh, you already kind of pointed out a couple of ideas uh, in the emails that we exchanged, but particularly I was interested in what you had to say about inclusive weddings. Great. Okay. Inclusive to me is is a big term and, and for me it looks at who's at the wedding. So our language as celebrants has had to change, not just with the Marriage Act, with marriage equality, but also how we address people. Uh, we are always trying to avoid now gender biases, um, those assumptions that we always took for many, many, many years, basically for our entire lives to say good yeah. morning, ladies and gentlemen, was a perfectly normal and very polite thing to do. And it is muscle memory, but now we're having to change it to friends, family, special guests, um, everyone. Some people are, like, are using you all, but I still hate you all. Um, <laughs> I won't be using it. But I'm, I'm personally on. a fan of saying um, hi, folks. I feel like folks, <laughs> is, a, 
is a you know non-gendered way of addressing a large group of people it is it is and with a small wedding you could probably do that but when i have people i also marry people of all cultural backgrounds with many many yeah. languages spoken so i need a slightly higher range of yeah, language yep. then you know if i had a group of just straight white anglo aussies it would be different but i work with everybody and so my language needs to match what they'll understand yeah, and of course. that inclusivity when i'm yeah, um, absolutely across those cultural barriers those language barriers those things that make people draw in and it is it's about connecting with people so inclusivity is language it is also where is this ceremony is this what do we have here do we have elderly people who might have mobility issues mm. what about wheelchairs walking sticks have you picked a place that is completely unrealistic for anyone with a um with a long-term illness that can't get there or anybody who's pregnant you want you want a, a six-month pregnant lady to stand out in the 40 degree heat in the sun because the photographer told you the photos would be better outside <laughs> than if you're inside is this cool i say no i've mm. had 85 year old grandma stuck outside in the rain on a 15 degree day because the photographer said that if we went inside the weather would be bad uh, that the photos would be bad yeah and i had to stop that ceremony mid mid ceremony because grandma is 85 yeah wow and yeah. she's in the rain and it's 15 degrees and that is not cool to me mm -hmm. it's not okay so how do we make everybody feel comfortable and that's again they use the word generous i love that generosity of spirit yeah absolutely oh that's such an incredible way of thinking about that word oh it's generous of spirit. spirit yeah who is around us how do we make this moment connect in our brains in our bodies how do we make people connect to it feel comfortable the word guest i'd love people to understand that the word guest has connotations you are my guest. I should look after you. I should yeah. pay attention to your comfort. I could apply, you know, I could supply a few little bits and pieces here that don't actually cost me a lot in finance, but show, show that empathy. Hot days, I say to everybody, let's just put a little comfort pack out there. Water bottle, sunscreen, fly spray. Absolutely, yeah. There's Aussie weddings in the summer. You know what I do? <laughs> yes. I say, don't wear perfume to your ceremony put it on afterwards because flies love flowers they love hairspray they love perfume and let me tell you a fly on your lip doing your vows not great oh. <laughs> I've, I've definitely edited out my fair share of flies yeah. from photos <laughs> yep. right here they go right here um, but the guests are uncomfortable if the wind is horrendous and we're being knocked off our feet and they can't hear because no one's PA system can cover Watson's Bay on a hot, on a very windy day. Yeah, yeah. Are they comfortable? No. Are they connected? No. Are they feeling that generosity of spirit that you sent them when you invited them to be your guest? Yeah. Probably not. That's... Oh, I just love the way that you kind of reframed a word that I was kind of already really clued in on what I thought it meant. And you've reframed generosity to be so much more than just about um, like material giving material. and material generosity, but it's the thoughtfulness behind why your guests are there and how you're treating them as well. Yes. If you want to sneak off behind a tree and it's just the two of you, you can go anywhere you like do what you want stand in 40 degree heat stand in the rain no worries not you know fine and 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 you know that you'll do whatever you can to make them happy and i certainly will too yeah yeah but when i stand in front of people and i welcome them i want them to feel welcome yeah so yeah there's I one thing to say that someone's welcome but it's another to actually feel it for yourself that you are welcome that's right. Yeah. And then, of course, there are things like acknowledgement of country. Now, yeah. personally, my, I, I and, and many, many celebrants always are very keen to do this, but it's not my event. Mm. So I won't force it down the throats of the couple that I'm marrying. I won't say we have to do this because it isn't, I'm not in ownership. I'm the caretaker of that moment. Um, 
Could Very you explain, happy. Robin, um, what what is an acknowledgement of country and why would it be something for a couple to consider at their wedding? Oh, of course. Acknowledgement of country is where we acknowledge that the land that we are taking our vows on and the land that we are enjoying at this moment is not ours. We're we're borrowing it. We're borrowing it from its original owners. We get the opportunity to thank those original owners. We acknowledge that they were here first. Mm. And I find that the people who like to do this the most are actually of non-English speaking backgrounds. Yeah. Wow. That's really interesting. Which I love because the way I sort of frame it up is, you know, maybe perhaps they weren't born here, but they are they are with us. They are grateful for this land. We are grateful for this land. We are grateful for our opportunities. And then the, the acknowledgement of country can, has several different types of what types of uh, wording, but essentially it is an appreciation for the opportunity to share in this land that does not belong to us, but we are borrowing and mm. we are caretaking. And that's really lovely, but I won't Absolutely. make anyone do it because at the end of the day, it isn't my decision because I am not the boss of that moment. I'm just a caretaker. Sure. I can offer it. Even better. I mean, I, I am so happy if we have an Indigenous person who can do it for us, it becomes a welcome to country. Yeah. And that's really beautiful and so special. But that doesn't happen incredibly often that we have a guest that is able to do that. When we do it, it it's beautiful. Some of our non-English speaking guests, their language, they may not understand it. Um, if they have flown over from China, for example, if they've come in from somewhere and their English is light, they may not understand. Yeah, and that's sure. okay. That's okay because it is short and it is sweet. But it is meaningful to those that want to use it and it is something that we will see more and more and more of. Yeah, absolutely. It's something, it's, I think it's something that I've noticed um, in the last 12 months that it's definitely picking up a, a steam and, and more and more couples, I think, are recognising that the, the value of just taking that moment at the start of a ceremony um, and, and having their celebrant do that acknowledgement of country is a really great way of, of paying respect uh, to Aboriginal Australians and, and acknowledging that, as you say, like this, is, this is borrowed ground and, and the history under which we white Australians kind of have inherited this is, is quite um, messy and, 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 and really it's, you know, it's been a harmful uh, legacy that, that white people have kind of left. And so the, I feel like the least that we can do is acknowledge that the, tr the traditional owners are um, Aboriginal Australians. And, um, and it's something that I know that, that through their communication with, um, you know, a, a, the Australian community is like, this is something that we appreciate when you do it. Yes, yes, no, I wholeheartedly agree. Um, and it's certainly something that I run past most of my couples, unless, of course, I know that they don't understand it. Yeah, after. sure. And then I, I leave it um, because there's no point forcing something onto people who, for whom it will not be meaningful. Yeah, yeah. yeah if, they've flown in, if they've flown in and they don't have very good English or whatever and they're only going to be here for a couple of days and they don't understand that whole thing, it's probably not worth it. But when we have a group here that live here, work here, happy here, feel yeah. connected, that's when it's most meaningful. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, it was, was there anything else you wanted to touch on? I feel like I've gotten so much out of even just these 10 minutes with you. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but was there anything else that you wanted to share? Yeah, I think we could go back to that idea of ethical, generous, inclusive, I personally, I mean, I'm a celebrant. Celebrants care deeply about the language that is spoken and the way things feel. We are unable to provide tangible memories of our services later. So the memories are really important. Yeah. We would always say, think, think past Instagram, think past what something looks like in a picture and to how it feels because everybody will have better memories of something that felt warm and and connected with everybody yeah. Yeah. than just a bunch of pretty pictures. And yeah, you pretty... want those authentic moments rather yeah. than a, an Instagrammable moment. Yeah, 
because a lot of those Instagrammable moments are completely fake. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're a photographer. Absolutely. And you and you are you're at the the beck and call of it all the time, more so than the rest of us, because everybody wants those moments that they can put out there to create this appearance of things. But the most beautiful moments, you know, again, as a photographer, are where grandma sheds a tear. Yeah, absolutely. Or when um, something beautiful happens amongst a family or, you know, there's the, they're the things that you didn't plan, the things you didn't sort of mastermind so you get a great shot. They're the mm. ones that people actually felt and quite often they're the things you did not expect. Absolutely. And I always say to my clients, like my favorite photos are always the photos that don't remind you of what happened, but that remind you of how you feel or how Absolutely. you felt. Absolutely. And that's exactly right. That's why flat lay, although it's as pretty as anything. <laughs> there's, there's, no no feeling. Feeling. <laughs> there's no feeling. Will you go, oh, I remember that when you look at your flat lay pictures. No, I'll tell you, my favourite photo from my wedding is of my grandmother. It's a black and white photo. She was in a wheelchair. My nana isn't with us anymore. But of all of the photos that were taken on that day, the one that is indelibly printed into my brain is of my grandma. Yeah, in incredible. So happy. Far more important than any pretty photo that was taken of me or yeah. anybody else. Yeah, yeah. And that, I think that connects. I think that when we really search for the real meaning of what we're doing there, why are we there? What does it mean? Particularly now when we've been denied so much that we take for granted mm, and absolutely. The people love, you know, we can't, we can't do this and we can't do that. We can't do that. What do people really miss? They miss their families. They miss their friends. And if we could just remember that going forward when restrictions are lifted and when life goes back to normal, that, Instagram doesn't change your life. That's great. That's so good, Robin. Thank you so much. Now, yeah. if, um, if there are people watching this who are looking for a celebrant who is um, all about inclusivity and, and ethical wedding ceremonies, where can they find you and how can they get in touch? Oh, Hank, my head is everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. I'm sick of my own head. I'm on Instagram at RP Marry Me. Um, yeah, you can find me. You can find me. I'm easy. Yeah, just a good Google of uh, Sydney wedding celebrant Robin Patterson will will pull you up hey, real hey, quickly. Hey, the wedding See, I did not give myself that that title. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> Yeah, my head is everywhere. I'm easy to find. Yeah, fantastic. Well, thank you again, Robin, for your time and for sharing all these thoughts. I, thank you. It's brilliant. Yeah, thank you. All right, I'll catch up with you later. Bye. Have a great day. Bye. You too. Bye-bye.